So people use Fly because what they want to do is they want to run their apps close to their users because it's faster and they can build mm -hmm. better features. Um, and what they and they can't because it's complicated to do that basically on any other infrastructure. Right. So I feel like the closest competitor or or thing that would be closest to that would be a CDN provider. Correct. Who's sole goal is to get as close to the end user as possible is that is that line up with what you're doing uh yeah so we um when we pitch to investors we talk a lot about the cdn market um and the difference between um traditional cdns and what we're doing is they work well for static assets they don't work for like a, a like a, a rails or an elixir or a or a python process with a database behind it and so we're kind of tackling if you're being all analyst about it, OLTP workloads, right? Um, but um, <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so it's like, like I said, you'll see, uh, if you see us comment on Hacker News, I've been saying for almost two years at this point, like our goal is to make the most boring Rails app in the world run on every region without any really code or architectural changes. Um, ah, that, that was my question. Do, what is incumbent on me as the app developer? Do, do I have to care about distributed computing and being able to run this thing in more than one place? Uh, database backend synchronization, all that kind of stuff. Or is this some magical thing where I check the multiple regions box and all of a sudden it's, it's available closer yeah. to my customer? Um, I would say it's it's magical, but it's in a really easily to understand. It's not it's not the type of magic you look at and don't know how it works. It's what I think is kind of a clever take on a, a way of deploying apps that devs understand. So um, I'll tell you all we're doing. And so one of our hypothesis here is that all apps should run close to users. And basically, the reason they don't is because the infrastructure is wrong for this, right? So like, our goal was to build a thing that the max possible number of developers could use to ship apps close to people. Um, and and uh, we did some things. We tried various databases are the hard part, right? So we tried various things, um, and I can tell you all the things we did wrong. But what we landed on is we built a hosted Postgres, and um, we built in multi-region read replicas. Uh, one of the interesting things about apps people build is despite everyone liking to talk about big data and, and high write volumes and things, the reality is like almost everyone's building a read heavy app with a relatively small database. There's just mm -hmm. not like anything beyond that is almost an edge case in some ways. And so what we did mm -hmm. is we built, um, I'm waving my hands around. Uh, we have diagrams <laughs> on our website for this, but uh, we built... Um, we built the read replicas into Postgres. Um, we made it so you can run your app processes next to the Postgres replicas. So if you have a Postgres database in Chicago, it's easy to launch a read replica in Sydney um, and have your application servers run alongside those. Um, the, real, the, the magic here is that when apps talk to databases, they mostly have, like most frameworks, have this idea of a read replica built in. And mm -hmm. so they can kind of decide if they're mm -hmm. doing mostly reads or they're doing writes. Um, what we did is we made it so when you're in Sydney, you're only talking to the read replica. And what you have to do to make your app work in this way is catch the inevitable error that when a write happens. So we will send all the requests in Sydney to your app. Um, if they only do reads, it works just fine. If it does a write, what happens is Postgres says, hey, uh, this is a read-only copy of this database. I can't accept this write. And then you actually tell us to replay that whole request back to Chicago where the writes can happen. And so the idea is that you just do the naive thing um, and when a write does need to happen, we, again, use network tricks, right, to get that kind of bundle of writes that happen in an HTTP request back to Chicago, uh, where it just magically works. You said network tricks, and every network engineer listening to this show just went, oh, God. Yes, right, exactly. It's, it's stupid load balancing tricks is what you could label it if you're being <laughs> – <laughs> so um, one more multiple region question for you, Kurt. Is fault tolerance another reason that I would do this beyond, uh, you know, geo awareness? Yes. Um, yes, it is. There's actually a bunch of, I'd call like secondary reasons. For, for the most part, devs want the performance. Um, and for the most part, the devs who use Fly have been disappointed in what a CDN can offer to their particular application. Um, I, have, I have fun, pithy statistics for all of us. Something like 60% of the top, hundred biggest Y Combinator companies don't use a CDN at all, uh, which yeah. I always thought was a fascinating thing. Um, but there's a couple other like kind of like secondary benefits. Resiliency is a good one. We've had we've had issues where a customer we had a customer running that was backed by S3. Um, and I feel like it was last year. At one point there was a AWS DNS issue that made S3 inaccessible from certain regions, but it worked just fine from others. And we actually saw their app fail in those regions and then migrate to the regions where it was working. Uh, and their users didn't know any difference. It was like it was slightly slower, 
but kind of the infrastructure moved them. Um, I thought that was very cool. And then the other one is data, kind of like data locality for like uh, regulatory reasons. A lot of people yes. like being yeah. able to keep their data in Europe or Canada because they have to. Uh, okay. like secondary. <laughs> they like thing. to do it because they have to do yeah, it. Exactly. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> they can check that box for their boss. Um, actually, what they really like is doing it with the same tooling. It's a, it's like a relatively, it's a simple kind of infrastructure problem for them on fly, whereas doing it otherwise would have maybe been a headache if they had to kind of do it mid-flight. 